What's up, everyone? James Murphy here from M Coding, back today to talk to you about a new way to add metadata to your type annotations that was introduced in Python 3.9. So I've already got here uh, some sample code from the What's New in Python 3.9 uh, release documentation. Uh, and I'd just like to go through it and give you an idea of what actually was annotated um, or what actually was added uh, in terms of these annotations. So the actual thing that was added was this annotated um, element here of the typing module. And that's going to go in place of one of your variable annotations. So you can see, let's say down here, I have a student class with uh, a name attribute. And instead of saying name colon string like this, now I'm going to mark it as name is annotated and I'll pass in string and some extra information. So this extra information is the metadata. If we didn't have any metadata, we would have just said colon string like before. Now, uh, there, there's a lot of code here that doesn't actually run, and that's sort of why I'm not um, typing it up um, as we go, because these tools um, to do these things that I'm talking about don't yet exist. But now, with this new feature, um, it, the, the framework is now there. Um, so this annotated uh, thing is just a wrapper around uh, a class, uh, in this case int, with this extra information. So what I'm assuming here is that there's some struct2 module. Now currently there's the struct module for packing structures, um, reading and writing C structures, basically taking a Python object and packing it as tightly as possible into you know, some bytes. But we're just going to assume that there's this struct2 module that does things using these annotated um, variables instead of the way that um, struct currently does it, where you have to do everything manually. So I can define annotated types like unsigned short and signed char. So in Python, the type checker, the type checker should just treat both of those as ints because in Python, there's no distinction between unsigned short, short, signed char. The, those things are just handled by the Python language. But in C, and if you're going to be writing things to disk, uh, then those actually matter. So what this is saying is, in Python, this is an int, but for the purposes of packing it into a C structure, treat this using the struct format string h, which means um, unsigned short. Uh, and similarly, b here means signed char. Um, if you wanted to actually get those uh, pieces of information out at runtime, then you would be able to do that using the get args method uh, of that um, from the typing module. So let's take a look at what a student class could look like. So we would somehow inherit from the struct 2's uh, packed um, class. And that's going to mean that student is going to be a class where everything is annotated with a C type. So that's sort of the assumption here. Now, assuming everything is annotated with a C type, then the class looks like this. I'm going to have a name, a serial number, and a school. And now they all have well-defined both Python and C types. Then I would be able to uh, take some bytes, let's say I got a record, I read some bytes from disk uh, that was the output of a C program or something written to disk by a C program, then I would be able to say student.unpack and feed in those bytes and get out an actual student object. Now, the way that this unpack method would have to work, and just to reiterate, uh, the, this library struct2 doesn't exist and this unpack method doesn't exist yet, but because these type annotations are now available at runtime um, with this extra metadata, we could, in theory, write this unpack function 
uh, that would look at those annotations and it would say, okay, uh, I'll go through my student class and I see first there's a name with this format string and then there's a serial number with the H format string and then the school with the B format string. And then it could, you know, put those together and get one big format string uh, and then pull out the elements from the bytes uh, and assign them to uh, the student class using uh, that information and actually build a real student Python object. Uh, so that's the idea. And of course, uh, there would be a similar um, opposite sort of thing. I, you know, I could get my record back by saying um, like student.pack. And that would return a bytes object back. But of course, none of this uh, exists just yet. But I'm uh, I'm actually really excited to see uh, when the um, different library writers are going to start implementing things like this because uh, packing efficiency. Th th this was probably the number one motivating example for why this annotated structure was added into the language. Um, and so, third-party tools like static type checkers um, will be able to take advantage of this, but also these um, runtime. Um, situations can also come up. So next, I wanted to talk about uh, one of my favorite um, applications of this. And in, in Python, uh, constness is not as big a deal as it is in other languages. In fact, as far as I know in Python, it's pretty much impossible to really make something const uh, in the sense that it, it's not possible to ensure that a variable cannot be changed. You know, that you, you can change the, the get adder, the set adder methods, things like that, and um, sort of prevent a normal user from doing it accidentally. But if someone really wanted to, um, th they could still find a way to change a variable. Um, but in, in the spirit of Python, we're going to assume that um, we're actually thinking about good actors here, people who just want to mark their code um, as being um, a, a certain way so that other people can understand what it's doing. So the, these annotations are not going to be enforced, but something like a static type checker could check them for you and warn you, um, or just someone reading your code could see a method and know what it is supposed to or not supposed to do. So here's the example. We're going to define const. And this is going to be one of these annotated things. And it's going to be a generic. So I have a type variable t. So for any t, I'm going to define a const of t, uh, which adds this um, myannotations.const um, metadata to it. Now, this myannotations.const, this can just be some class um, that's just used as a, a marker, basically. Then, Anywhere that I want to mark a method uh, as taking, let's say, a const parameter, uh, let's say in, in this case, um, maybe just so the syntax highlighting is correct, we'll make self just self here, and then you know L the list. Um, we'll say that I have a class C, and you can call some const method on C, meaning you pass in um, this list of integers, but um, so for, for the purposes of type checking, this will be a list of integers, but it's now marks, marked excuse me, with const. So that means I shouldn't be modifying this list anywhere in this function. So if anywhere I saw you know, L of 0 equals 1, something like that, I would know that that would be an error. Um, and as a reader of code like that, uh, if I saw a const, I would be able to tell myself that, oh, this is not supposed to be modifying anything. And I, that can help me get a better idea of what the function is actually doing. So like I said before, in, in Python, this sort of mentality is not as widespread as in other languages like C and C++. Const correctness is um, one of the most important things when thinking about how to write functions because just like we have um, other static type checker um, or static analysis tools, such as type checkers, there are things like MyPy and 
other static type checkers, um, those static type checkers at runtime don't do anything. But that doesn't mean that they're useless. Static type checking is extremely useful, mainly because you're going to make mistakes when you write code. And these type checkers can catch some of them before you ever even have to run the program and see it crash. Uh, or worse, have it run and do something not crash that you didn't want it to do. Uh, so it, it's the same sort of thing with constness. Uh, I'm really excited to see when uh, library writers are going to start using const um, in their libraries because it, it, it can be a whole, uh, a whole new world of Python um, if, we, if we start using um, const correctness when we write our functions. Well, that is all I have. So let me know if you have any other ideas. How can uh, metadata and variable annotations be used? If you come up with something um, that I haven't talked about here, go ahead and let me know. I'd uh, be really interested to see other applications uh, of these uh, annotated variables. Hey everyone, thanks for watching again. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe if you enjoyed the video. Um, also, if you're interested in learning Python from me, I actually offer live online courses in Python. So go ahead and drop your contact information at the link in the description to see when these courses become available.